Furries are changing the way we use VR again. So it's no secret that furries tend to hold a lot of very smart, very technologically advanced places in society. Odds are, if you have internet, a furry probably has worked on your network at some point. And personally, I have friends that have been nuclear physicists, astrophysicists, and I even have a friend that works at NASA. But none of that quite blew my mind the way that this did. This user is moving his ears around in VR chat with the power of his mind. Using something called a brain computer interface or a BCI, Rantis is able to control his ears by simply thinking about it. Now, this is a gross oversimplification of a BCI, but essentially it turns your thoughts into actions. In the most basic sense, the way a BCI works is it takes the electrical impulses of your brain, converts them to a language that can be read by a computer, and then interpreted with a program to essentially move something by the power of thinking about it. Now, BCIs aren't exactly an old concept, but they aren't a new one either. The first recorded use of the word brain-computer interface was actually in 1973. Research on BCIs began in the 1970s at the University of California in Los Angeles by Jacques Vidal to basically make prosthetics. This was the beginning of the research to make prosthetics able to be controlled by the mind. Now, obviously in 1973, they didn't have access to the resources or the knowledge or the technology that that we have today. In the modern age, companies like Psionic are taking the charge in making prosthetics that are controlled by electrostimulation. And we've made some crazy advances both in the medical field and in the theoretical field because of this. Imagine being able to move a hand or a limb that you don't actually have access to. That is the power of a brain-computer interface. Which brings us back to how it can be used in VR. Now, Rantis here might just look like he's looking into a mirror and showing off that he can move his ears, but it's actually a little more nuanced than that. In this video, you see him actually training himself how to move muscle groups that he doesn't have via the brain-computer interface. Essentially, to move his ears, all he has to do is think really hard. And that's a gross oversimplification of what's actually happening in the video. Now, the creator of the software that makes this possible in VR chat has actually come out and explained a little bit about it. First, we have to take into account the headband being used. And in this case, it's the Muse MU-01. It has four contact points that touch your head in various places. Rather than read your thoughts, it instead reads the contraction of specific micro muscles. In its current iteration, it can only really read anything from focus or relaxed states. Essentially meaning it's trying to gauge what muscles are being micromanaged in order to move the muscles you want to move that you don't actually have on yourself. What's happening in this video essentially is Rantis putting himself through physical therapy in order to learn how to move his ears. The point of looking at himself in a mirror is making sure he's actually moving his ears. Essentially though, Rantis is trying to flex non-existent muscles, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. But what's even more mind-blowing is that it's possible in VR chat, and it's accessible. Apparently this was all done with a Muse MU-01, which costs about $200 US. So if you're willing to spend that and spend a little time setting up your avatar for it, you too can have the same or similar level of movement by just using your brain. Now, essentially, this is pretty gimmicky. This is by no means a perfect solution to moving your ears or tail around in VR if you do have a furry avatar. But the fact that it's even doable in the first place to this extent is absolutely mind boggling. So I want to pass off the question to you. What do you think about this technology? Do you think you would use it yourself? Does it make you excited for the future of VR or does it make you scared of the other technology that's to come? Let me know your reactions in the comments below. In my personal opinion, because of something like this being so easily accessible, we're probably going to see some crazy stuff when it comes to VR, especially in the enthusiast market where this is going to thrive. The fact that it's so accessible and looks incredibly simple to set up is just gonna add fuel to that fire. But let me know what sort of things you would do if you had a BCI. I can't believe we got furries building BCIs to move their ears in VR chat before we got GTA 6.